stop. No, leave it alone. Leave it alone, please. <laughs> I'm in my bed today, as you can see. Um, so my cat might make an appearance or two or three. Um, but if you are wondering why I'm in my bed today, it is because uh, I am recording this uh, the Friday evening before this video was supposed to go up, um, which I usually never do, but it's been a long week. It's been a long day. Um, and best believe as soon as I am done recording, I am going to take the meanest nap I have ever taken in my entire life. Um, because today drained me. Mm -mm -mm. Today drained me. <laughs> um, so I'm going to apologize in advance if I am not super like clear and focused today. I was supposed to record this video last weekend, but um, after last Friday, I just absolutely crashed on Saturday and just didn't have the energy to record um and then i was supposed to record earlier this week but then i just got super busy and then the election happened <laughs> and now i just sort of feel like i'm moving through my days in like a weird haze um and so i just decided to suck it up and Where did you get that from? My child found one of my exercise bands. Um, yeah, so today I just decided to suck it up and despite how tired I am, to record. So that is what I'm doing. So let's just get into it. Hey, hello, my name is Jojo and welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new here, welcome. I've missed saying that. <laughs> So yeah, first things first, I guess. Hi, hello, I am alive. Um, I have not posted a video, um, like a solid video. I posted like I think a short or two, um, maybe it was just one, um, but I haven't posted like a legit video like this in like a month. And if you may or may not have noticed, there are a few things that might look a little different, might sound a little different. I got a new, well, not a new camera. I got a camera. Um, I am no longer recording on my phone. I got an actual camera um, and the sound quality might be a little bit better. I'm not entirely sure yet if the sound quality is going to be better. I did a little mini test before I started recording and the sound quality sounded much better to me, but I don't know how it's gonna translate through a video. Um, but the camera comes with a little microphone. Um, and so hopefully the sound quality is also much better. And it's all thanks to y'all, everyone who is subscribed, everyone who watches, everyone who interacts with my videos, engages with my videos. Um, yeah, I I am able to get this camera because of y'all, so thank you. Um, but anyway, yes, we should just get right into the absolute dumpster fire. I, I'm pretty sure I can call it a dumpster fire. Um, the absolute dumpster fire that was October. <laughs> so I know that my update videos usually follow like a pretty standard format that I've just taken on over the years. Um, I usually talk about classes first, then I'll talk about research, that, or I'll talk about, then I'll talk about clinical work, and then I'll talk about research, and then I will just talk overall about how I'm feeling at whatever point in the semester or year that I'm in. Um, we're just gonna throw all that out the window right now. We're talking about internship. <laughs> so if you are extremely new here and you weren't aware, 
Um, I am in my fourth year of my clinical psych PhD program, which means that I just got done submitting internship applications. So it is November 8th, it is Friday, November 8th, and all 13 of my internship applications have now been submitted. And yeah, internship applications almost took me out for real. Um, um, so I had originally intended on applying to 15 sites, um, but I realized while writing cover letters for two of the sites that I had initially planned on applying for that um, I didn't actually really want to end up at those sites and I wasn't willing to submit applications for them anyway and risk matching at one of those two sites um, just for the sake of matching. Um, and so that's a little, I know we haven't like fully dove into anything yet, but that's just a little, I guess, pointer is if you are writing cover letters, it'll become very apparent to you which sites you actually want to end up at versus which sites you were only submitting applications for to say you submitted applications for them. Um, but anyway, so going back, so I did a big no-no and I started working on my internship applications probably, well, I didn't start working on them much later, but I started making like actual progress on them much later than I think most people recommend, um, which is that I didn't actually really start working, working on anything until like end of September, early October. Um, and I didn't start working on cover letters until like a week and a half before most of my applications were due. And a, a, a big part of that, I think, is because I, I've mentioned this health wise, I have just not been doing very well. Um, and so I just genuinely did not have the energy to work on anything. Thankfully, I had already had a testing report written that I felt was really solid and I also had a case summary written that I felt was really solid. So like I didn't have to do much editing to those. I did minor tweaks um, more specifically to my case summary, but um, the, the bulk of the work I really had to do for my applications were essays and cover letters uh, in addition to like submitting my hours and time to track and all of that. Um, but because I started working on all of that so much later than is, is recommended, um, when it came down to like the last week before applications were due, like I was absolutely panicking, especially because like I was sending drafts of my essays to two different people. I was sending drafts to my research advisor and I was also sending drafts to one of my mentors who has helped me with my writing a lot in the past and I felt like I trust her feedback on my writing. She understands my writing style. She understands how I'm trying to communicate things. And so um, she <laughs> she will um, take a, like, a lot of time and effort to help me make my writing as, as good as it can be. But in terms of like the two individuals I was sending my essays to, they themselves have very different writing styles. And so I was getting conflicting feedback from both of them. Um, and so this is the downside. They, they, people often suggest that you get as many people to read drafts of your essays as possible. Just having two people read my essay drafts was difficult um, because like my mentor would say something was really good and then my research advisor would say mm, I don't think that's the best way to say that and vice versa my research advisor would say something was really good and then my mentor would be like mm, yeah I don't know about that <laughs> so it was just like constant conflicting feedback until finally I just had to like 
look at my essays and say like this is this is all I can do like I I can't continue to edit these because I feel like my own voice might be getting a little lost in everything even though like I ended up with essays that I felt good about but I realized that like I can't I can't keep trying to work both people's feedback into what I'm writing because it's just it's going to no longer sound like me um and so that was happening and then also I was I was working on cover letters and I had written probably like seven out of the 13 cover letters at that point um and it was like the day before applications were due and for some reason my brain just told me like none of your cover letters are good enough <laughs> and so um i panicked and rewrote all seven of the cover letters that i initially wrote and then the night applications were due sat there like proofreading them over and over and over again until like 10 55. <laughs> applications that were due on the first were due at 11 59 and I just, I was panicking the entire night. Mind you, this is all after I've had a full day of patients. I saw five patients on Friday, um, November 1st, and then I had didactics for my externship. And then I had to finish writing cover letters before I could submit my applications. It was just, it had been a really long day and <laughs> Then it came time to submit and they're like, I understand that it's like they want you to, they want students to make sure that they're absolutely certain that their applications are ready before they submit them. But because they're trying to do that, there are just like so many confirmation steps you have to go through. You have to like click submit and then you have to like confirm that you want to submit and then you have to enter your payment information, which by the way, I'm probably going to make a whole different video on because the scam and exploitation that is having to pay to submit applications for an internship that I am required to complete in order to graduate with my degree insane absolutely insane but we're gonna talk about that in a whole different video because we won't have time today um but yeah you have to like enter your payment information and click submit and then there's like a final confirmation screen saying like um like you have to like click i agree or i understand that once i click submit i cannot change any of my application materials it's a lot <laughs> I know for some people that might seem really small, but every new confirmation button I had to click evoked more panic from me. Um, I actually recorded myself like in the process of submitting my applications. I'll probably insert a little clip of that so y'all can just see exactly like the the waves of emotion and panic that were that I was experiencing as I was submitting my applications. It was it was insane. I'm freaking the fuck out right now um <laughs> and i can't even hold my phone because i'm shaking it is 10 50 p.m <laughs> 10 52 because i've been talking for two minutes okay <gasps> i feel sick to my stomach my i'm sorry baby my anxiety i just can't help but feel like i missed something like there's something wrong. I either forgot something or I messed something up. I've proofread the letters to death. <sighs> I just have to I just have to trust that I've done my best with these. <sighs> okay. Oh, I can't see. My vision's going blurry. Okay. Mm. Oh God. Okay. <sighs> I 
I can't click continue. <laughs> I can't click continue. Oh my god, my stomach is doing flips. Okay. Okay. Oh my god, I have to hit. Oh god. I thought continue was it. I have to hit another button. <laughs> there are too many buttons to click. Oh my god. I acknowledge that I will not be able to edit my application after submission. <sighs> okay. Okay, one, two, three. <laughs> I'm gonna be sick, I'm gonna be sick, I'm gonna be sick, I'm gonna be sick. I'm gonna cry. Why am I about to cry? I need to go, okay. So all of that happened and then I went to bed. Well, I didn't go to bed right away. I'm not gonna lie. I had a glass or two of wine <laughs> because I needed, I needed to cope. Okay, I had like two glasses of wine and then I played Animal Crossing for a little bit and then I went to bed. Um, <laughs> that is how I cope. But yeah, that happened. And then I woke up Saturday and I just, I couldn't function. I, all I wanted to do was sleep. It was like my body knew that like a huge weight had been lifted off of me and all it could manage to do was like, I it just wanted to sleep the whole day. Um, and so I actually ended up doing absolutely nothing on Saturday. So yeah, that that was what I, I have been through in terms of the, the weeks leading up to applications and like how I navigated that. However, comma, my program, my program, the disorganization just added so much more stress than needed to be added. And honestly, I'm probably also going to save that for <laughs> the same video where I am talking about. I'll, I'll probably just end up doing like a whole video on like everything wrong with the internship application process. I'm I now that I've been through it. I have a lot of feelings about it that are not good. And I am angry about a lot of things. <laughs> so we'll, we'll save that for another video. Um, now, going back to like actual like school school updates. Um, my externships have gotten so intense. Um, and when I say that, I mean in terms of like my patients, um, I have several patients right now who are going through a really tough time. It's weird though, because even though like so much is happening in my patients lives right now and in my own life, I'm still finding working with my patients to be so, like something that I look forward to every week, even though by the end of my days, like today, um, I am absolutely drained. Um, I don't even, I don't know if I've like said what my caseloads are, but um, at my part-time externship, I'm seeing three patients one of one of which I see twice a week for um, psychoanalysis, and then at my VA externship, I have a current I currently have a caseload of seven patients and a group, um, and I'm possibly going to be adding another group to that caseload within the next couple of weeks. Um, so I. I am at a point now where I am seeing patients back to back to back for hours out of the day. Um, on Tuesdays, I have three patients back to back. Um, 
on Thursdays, I have my group and then two patients um, intermix with like meetings and um, supervision. I'm so sorry if you just heard my stomach. I'm hungry. I have not eaten anything since breakfast. And then on Fridays, I see five patients back to back followed by didactics. Um, so on the days where I'm seeing patients, they're, they're long days. I don't think I've ever felt so drained by my clinical work in the three years up until this point that I've been seeing patients. I don't think I've ever ended a day of seeing patients and felt so drained. Uh, usually on Fridays, Fridays are the days that I see patients virtually from home. By the end of the day on Fridays, the first thing I do when I log out is I dive into this bed and I just lay here in silence. <laughs> and I've never had to do that before, but I have to do that now. It's just a really new experience for me um, that I don't think I'm, I'm used to yet. In terms of research, um, all of that really for the month of October took a back seat. Um, I have not touched research in over a month. I have not touched anything related to my dissertation. I have not touched anything related to the paper that I'm working on with my lab mates. Um, I've been going to the meetings that we've been having, but in terms of like actually writing anything for the paper, have not done it, but I will probably get back to both of those that paper and my dissertation in like two weeks i'm going on vacation next week <laughs> next weekend is my birthday and i will be on vacation um which i will be vlogging so i'll i'll really i'll get my head back in the research game once i'm back from that vacation i just i really need a break um, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, but yeah, I don't think research will be coming back into the picture until after that. If I'm, I, if I'm truly being honest with myself, I would love to say like, yeah, starting on Monday, I'll like really start working on my IRB again and like finding recruitment channels and all. <sighs> nah <laughs> i just don't feel like it i don't feel like it and honestly i'm not gonna force myself to do it because then it's just yeah, it's not gonna be me giving everything i want to be giving to my research um which will then just make me feel <sighs> badly and i'll be really hard on myself later on so we're just gonna avoid that so there's that in terms of classes registration for next semester has happened um i did register for the absolute final class i will ever have to take as a phd student um and i could not be more ready to just be done with it all <laughs> i think i think registering for that one class finally like made me feel like oh my god I am so close I am so close I have one three credit class left to take that I actually would have taken last year if my school had gotten their shit together but we're not going to talk about that again um I have one <laughs> I have one three credit class left a year of internship and then I am done whoa <laughs> i am so close and i am so ready i am so ready to get my degree and get the hell up out of here <laughs> um and yeah that's that's where that's where i've been for the past month um if i'm being honest even though like i've still been like chronically exhausted and also the election results have just like absolutely 
like broken my brain. Like I have been like feeling a bit better physically this week in particular, just because like internship applications are out of the way. Um, I think just having that like stress off of my mind has um, helped a lot. So, you know, we'll see. We'll see how the rest of the semester goes. So yeah, uh, that's it for this video. I've been gone for a month, but I'm back and I am alive. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching, especially if you made it all the way to the end. I truly appreciate it. Leave me a comment down below if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos. And as always, like, share, and subscribe. Click that little notification bell so you don't miss my next upload because there will be another upload next week. <laughs> um, and yeah, I'll see you in my next one.